Okay, everyone, I'm here to present the last speaker. My name is Alanis Broussard. I'm a GCAP member from Trachy County. And I'm really excited for this one because if you tune into our fireside chat with some young ladies who were here earlier, we talked about pop culture and the influences on teens. And now we're gonna be talking about how young adults transform pop culture into effective sexual health messaging. A little bit of a bio of Antonia Bass. She's the founder of the North Carolina Sexual Health Conference. And she's a member of the Women in Color Sexual Health Network, the Association of Black Sexologists and Clinicians and the American Association of Sexuality Educators, Counselors, and Therapists. She's a certified health education specialist and an AASECT certified sexuality educator. She's a current member of the editorial board for the American Journal of Sexuality Education. And Tanya is an alumna of North Carolina Central University's Department of Public, Edu Public Health Education, where she has served as an adjunct instructor for several years and is currently the lead instructor for human sexuality. She is currently completing her PhD in education at Widener University in the Center for Human Sexuality Studies. Everyone, please welcome Ms. Tanya Bass. Hi, everyone. Um, hopefully you can hear me. Um, I'm really excited about today because I get to talk about a project that I've been working on for about the past four years now. Um, this year has probably been the year that we haven't worked on it, but you can imagine that. So what I'm here to talk about is something called performing sex ed. Um, like the introduction said, I do work as adjunct faculty at North Carolina Central University. I'd like to tell you a little bit about NCCU. So NCCU is the home of the Eagles, Eagle Pride um, in Durham, North Carolina. NCCU was founded as a historically black college and university in 1910. Um, NCCU is one of 11 and one out of 12. So one of 11 um, historical black colleges in North Carolina and one out of 12 um, historical minority. We also have a Native American, historically Native American institution here. We're located outside of the Research Triangle Park in North Carolina, and we proudly are one of two um, historically black colleges with a, um, or in North Carolina, with a public health education undergraduate program. Um, so that really makes us unique in the many things that we offer. Um, NCCU has historically been community focused, working on issues around diabetes, other health topics, HIV AIDS, um, to say the least. And just a little bit more, in 2001, our institution started a peer education project called Project Safe, where students were trained um, to teach other students about preventing HIV AIDS and other sexually transmitted infections. In 2004, our institution hosted the first statewide HBCU HIV AIDS conference called Stomp It Out. And it was a collaboration of all the minority colleges and universities in North Carolina, as well as other states, national speakers, and the Panhellenic Council of North Carolina. In 2004, well, sorry, in 2006, we actually had our first ever campus wide HIV STI STD event where students can go um, throughout our university student center and get tested for not only HIV, but also gonorrhea, chlamydia, and syphilis. So it was a phenomenal event. So as you can see, we've had really great support around talking about sexual health topics. Doesn't mean we haven't had challenges, but we've come a long way. And then finally, in 2013, NCCU um, became one of five, but now there's six. I won't mention the other school, okay? a and University up the street in Greensboro, our um, rival. But in 2013, NCCU was the fifth HBCU to have an LGBTQ center on their campus. So given the information about what we know about the South as it relates to HIV and AIDS, um, the rates of unintended pregnancy and the disproportionate um, impact in communities of color, it was very um, telling that in the work that we were doing in the Department of Public Health Education, that we had courses that centered around sexuality and that centered around HIV AIDS and even policy development. So it was a fit for me when I actually took the realm of teaching and becoming the lead human sexuality instructor in our department 
in 2000, I believe it was 2010 that I started teaching this course um, more so full time. I was sharing some of that responsibility. So it was a fit for my class. And so one of the things that when we're talking about performing arts, and I'm going to tell you more about it, it's arts based, but the sexuality content is still very relevant, still very timely. The messages are sex positive. One of the things that we offer up in our classes, and we try to instill this throughout our campus, that all people are welcome, that we're very affirming, and we try to be very open. If you look at some of the demographics of our college and our institution, you will see that our diversity and inclusion program has done a phenomenal job in working with um, communities, communities of color, queer, queer communities, to really recruit students to our campus to obtain their education. And so we also have this message and try to affirm this in the Durham community as well. We want that to be very clear. I want that to be clear. But when it comes to performing sex ed, this didn't take, like it wasn't a one woman show or I didn't do this alone. Uh, I actually had this program brought to me. I found out about it and someone approached me about expanding the work that they were doing. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about performing sex ed as a whole. So AMP, as you might see on the screen, is an acronym for Arts-Based Multiple Intervention Peer Education Program, um, specifically created at UCLA, UCLA Art and Global Health Center. And so here's my colleague and friend, Bobby Gordon, who approached me. So I think it was about 2012, um, Bobby reached out to some of the health behavior instructors at UNC Chapel Hill in their department or their school of public health. And so things were going well there, students were being engaged. And I'll tell you more what that engagement looks like. But they also wanted to be able to add a, um, a level of diversity of thought. So at AMP or at UCLA, they had something called a sex ed squad. And so these were students who would enroll in a course for a semester, um, sometimes two semesters, to learn about different topics related to HIV, AIDS, sexuality, um, family planning, contraception, different topics related to sex. And then they would be able to craft and create modules that would be able to be useful in their community working with middle and high school students. So when it came to North Carolina, it was pretty timely because 2012 was actually the mark of when we were in enrolling in a freshman class that would be receiving um, health education information from our newly written health education standards as it related to sexuality. In North Carolina, that is actually called reproductive health and safety education as of June 2009. And so fortunately, I was able to be a part of that policy change, having worked at the State Department of Education. So here's where I was able to bring my full self into understanding how AMP could actually work for NCCU. Something I probably need to mention to you all is that I'm also a graduate of NCCU. So I'm a double eagle. I have, uh, I think it might've been mentioned, but if it wasn't, I'm proudly will say, I have my bachelor's in public health from NCCU, as well as a master's in health promotion. So I've been working in the field of HIV AIDS prevention and reproductive health, and had worked on the policy change for the um, Healthy School Act that we had um, implemented in 2009. So all of this made sense when I met Bobby and we were looking at expanding the program. So with AMP, it is really about being sex positive. And most of you on this line may already know about like what sex, being sex positive means, et cetera. But we really want to be able to um, hone in and know that we want to be able to accept people for who they are, their sexual desires, their choices, their expression. And as long as they're doing things that are not harmful to others and are consensual, we want to support their curiosity and their growth and development around sexuality. 
another piece about sex positivity is that it's really a worldview. Um, it's a movement. It's something that you have to constantly work on. Being sex positive, and when we're working with students in particular, but also faculty and staff, it's something that you continuously do because we've been socialized in many ways to think about sex and sexual behavior and ideologies sometimes in a negative way or sometimes in ways that might not even be affirming for ourselves or people we care about or students that we know. So being sex positive is something that's really focused on in my human sexuality course and definitely as we look at the performing sex ed piece of human sexuality at NCCU. The cool thing is at NCCU, because in 2001, we established Project SAFE, we kind of already had a mindset around sex positivity. But here we're able to really hone into that and teach our students about being affirming to themselves and to others. And then also offer up a level of giving back to the community so that if they participated in performing sex ed, they know that it didn't stop on our campus, that it extended out into the community. And I'll tell you a little bit more um, about that as well. So we basically want to utilize videos and help schools, high schools in our state and most specifically in our local communities to have resources that are timely up to date. If any of you on this um, webinar, you might um, use some chat. Um, I'm saying use the chat, but you can use the chat to tell me if you work on, let's say, something like an evidence based intervention, like making proud choices or reducing the risk. Any of the ones that are evidence based, for the most part, you might notice that some of their videos are outdated. And even though the content hasn't changed, like the information is factual, many times participants who engage in those programs, although they um, can get the information, they often reflect on the fact that the videos are outdated or you know, it could be related to the clothes or the language that's used. And so with this project, it offers a resource that doesn't replace what is used in the EBI, but it actually allows people or students to have something that's more fresh and current related to sex ed. So let's talk about how it works. So because we wanted to expand the diversity in thought um, and to be more inclusive and collaborate across our campuses, we initially started at NCCU. We have since, just to give you an update, expanded to UNC Asheville to ensure that we can reach all areas of our state. But the first thing that happens is that we really do a brainstorm. So students come to class and they do a brainstorm on different topics that they think that their peers might want to know. So there's two levels to this, and I'm gonna explain how it happened, but I'm gonna give you the background first. So the brainstorming includes like, what topics do you think your peers need to know? So as I look at these group of students here with uh, uh, me today, or on this screen, on this slide, I, re I distinctively, distinctively remember students saying that it was important for their peers to know the difference between sexual behavior and intimacy, like physical intimacy or, you know, like physical sex and intimacy. Like it doesn't mean the same thing. And so one of the things that we talked about was like, how do you shop for intimacy? How do you communicate around intimacy? So that would be an example of the brainstorm. And then we do some oral exercises. We'll allow these students to have their voices in the room. So they get to talk about their own experiences, whether it was in high school or when they came to NCCU, what they learned. This group here, at least three of them were already engaged in Project SAFE. And so while we know that we're doing our very best efforts in Project SAFE to help them educate their peers, they also talked about some of the gaps related to Project SAFE and what they might not have learned. Because think about it, when you're from a prevention um, lens, sometimes you forget to be sex positive or your messages don't seem to be sex positive because you're always trying to prevent something versus telling people so much about what they can't do and, and, and not really having discussions about what they can do. And so then the other piece that we do is a lot of reading. So we offer up uh, readings related to personal lives, 
um, related to sexuality, maybe arts like James Baldwin, Audre Lorde. We look at different levels of reading and then connect it back to sexuality or it's related to sexuality, but connect it back to what the campus actually needs. And so then the students actually get to plan out what they wanna do and then they plan it from beginning to end. If there is something that requires a prop or a specific space, they got they have to scope out the space. They have to actually um, find the prop and bring it to the to the session so we can figure out exactly how we're going to do that. And you'll see a little bit more um, as I go along. So what also happens is that it allowed me to expand my courses. So I teach the human sexuality course for the campus and it's an elective for many students, but some of the health and physical education students are required to take it in order for them to teach in the state of North Carolina. The other part of it is that I was able to create a whole class solely dedicated to performing sex ed. So in the expansion class, we still taught, I still taught my content, but we allowed and made space for all the other activities related to this. And we typically focused and ended up with like one video. For the group of students here, we actually had three videos that we created and it was all of them. It was all based on um, brainstorming and coming up with an idea. So let me walk you through this a little bit because you might, you're probably wondering like, what is the brainstorm like? So the brainstorm of topics, so intimacy, um, still STI or STD prevention or testing, um, terminology that students actually use to make it more sex positive, uh, consent, making consent sexy. For this group, you might see the young lady at the top middle. She has a shirt that says, I am. I uh, think this was in 2017. And I feel like that was when Colin Kaepernick was um, really making a stance uh, against police brutality and the treatment of African-Americans and people of color in the United States. And so the young gentleman that you see in the corner um, was the only male identified individual in our class. And as we did a warm up exercise, and I, I, I think the speaker before, I was trying to um, type in the chat, but the speaker, um, two speakers was the second, the speaker before last, if that makes sense, um, she mentioned the I am poem. That is one of the exercises that we did in this class. And so given the dynamics of the class, like I'm sorry if I'm too excited, but like it was so amazing. And I can share that video with you um, as well. But the young lady who's holding up the peace sign, she actually is a great writer of poetry. And so what started out as an exercise to affirm who we were in that space, we had no intention of originally making that a thing. And because we're an HBCU, we actually took the poem. So it was a sentence stem that we all went around and we all filled in the I am pieces like of the, of the different sentences. But the content was so amazing that we took pieces of it and created a video to affirm students of color and to talk about the brutality and the issues going on in the United States because it still impacts our sexuality and reproduction. And that was one of the videos. So there's, that's why they have on those shirts. We, create, we got those shirts specifically to film that. And the film is all video still, well, I'm saying stills, but video, black and white, of them speaking out those I am statements compiled together. I can't tell you how phenomenal that was. So that was one of the things that came out of the class. Um, you see uh, Darius, that's his name, he's wearing a cape. So this is where some of it gets challenging and you have to rein in the students. So Darius, um, well, the group talked about people are just waiting on Captain Sava, you know what? And so we knew we couldn't say that. And we also want to be sex positive. We know people use um, the term HOE or reference um, people as that, but we wanted to reclaim that and take it back. So step, instead of Captain Sava, it was Captain Sava. Whoa, like every time somebody would say it, or like say that phrase, everybody would yell, whoa. And so during the video, uh, Darius portrayed this uh, superhero who would have condoms and HIV tests. And so that was their way of like, they wrote that script out. They talked about 
what this character would do and what the scenarios will look like. And you can see that we were on, we went to like five different places on campus to film this video to have people understand the different times when you really need to think about your sexual decision making and um, the resources that were available on campus. So it starts with the concepts um, and then the concepts have to match kind of the topics. So some of the concepts might be, this was a movie. Uh, the Some of the other concepts might be an auction or a commercial. We've had a sexy consent commercial. We've had um, a walkthrough of the intimacy mart, like going and shopping for intimacy and what that would look like. So whatever your topic was, you had to pair it with an actual um, uh, way to present that and then bring it all together. And the students had to write it all out. And so for class participation, they had to attend class to engage with their peers, to develop it, to learn the information, and then seeing every, every scene had to be scripted out, details down to what somebody was wearing, where it might be filmed, et cetera. And so it was really cool. So in the next one, I'm gonna attempt to show you one of the projects from 2018 and I'll let you see if you can figure out what the concept was and how everything came together. So I'm gonna take out my I hope this works. And turn it up. Boba, do you love me? Are you riding? Say you never ever try to criticize me. Cause I want you and I need you. And I'm down for you always for skin. Do you want me? What's up inside me? Say you never ever try to stigmatize me. Cause I want you and I need you. And I'm down for you always. But the real me has always been the same me. I swear I really love me and care about my body. Just the same as always. I had to make some choices. Cause I've been looking for me. Can't nobody stop me. When I take pictures, I see I am smiling. When I go shopping, don't worry about the size. And when I go out, ain't no shame about me. Cause you've been throwing shade and you really gotta stop it. What's your self, self, self-worth? Yeah. So now I'm gonna um be uh ending in a few minutes and hopefully I stop screen sharing. Um but that was the basic uh in, in 2018, you know the song. Um you you can see how they rewrote their lyrics and uh everything. And so it was really amazing that they brought that together. And now we can actually take that video, align it with some of the standards from our course and then, or for the courses in high school, and then uh, teachers can actually use that as a resource. So thank you. Tyra, thank you. This was so great and creative. I love it. I love the use of technology and music that's so current to our young people today. And so thank you for sharing all this great information. Everyone, if you want to go ahead and make sure that we Tanya, please remember, go to the people tab and connect with Tanya. She is also has a website, which is also um, the Southern Psychologist. And so check that out as well and her wonderful merchandise. So please connect with Tanya. Um, it is now five o'clock. So we're probably going to cut off in a minute. But what I wanted to share with everybody is the expo is now still open. So take this time and take this opportunity to connect with Tanya and connect with other people who are currently still in the chat. Hey, Brittany. Um, and so we understand that it is high. So there's still time for you all to participate. So remember, we would love to hear your feedback of today's event. 
Oh, I am. We going, oh, we would love to hear your feedback from today's event. So in the chat box, you will see a pin by our wonderful colleague, Alex. So if you can, please fill out the survey. And that really helps us to evaluate, see what you all love, see what we need to improve upon for the next time that we're going to go ahead and do a virtual summit. I want to thank everybody for being here with us today. I want to appreciate your patience and all of the effort with all the technology. And so we really appreciate you all spending either half of your day with us or the whole day with us and being able to learn more about why sexual health matters and why it's so, so important. Rick, I'm going to pass How it to you. How is everyone feeling? Can we get some oh, yeah. in the chat? I know that uh, some of you all have been with us the entire day and we appreciate you for hanging out and sharing your expertise and commenting and asking your question. It all means so much to us. Be sure to connect with us on social media, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Um, you can also follow GCAP on LinkedIn as well. Um, so right now the event is still open virtually for to 5.30. So it's still time to chat and connect with people and visit the expo. If you guys have questions, we're still gonna be around. Um, and we really just appreciate everyone engagement virtually online. Mm -hmm. um, I really feel like I have connected with people that I probably would have if it was like face to face. I had so much fun networking, like just randomly selecting me with someone. I didn't have to, uh, you know, eyeball people and see who was <laughs> friendly to walk up to. Uh, <laughs> the platform did that for me. And I, I was able to talk to two young people. What about you, Lakar? I was too. So I was able to talk with some young people. I met uh, Ryan from New Orleans. I also met Kashana from, um, well, Georgia and Pennsylvania, I will say <laughs> that. And so, and then being able to connect with everybody in the chat, I am so, I cannot be remiss to say thank you so much for all of our speakers. GCAP staff, we appreciate you. Our presenters, we appreciate you. To our wonderful youth leaders, our YAC members, our Youth Advisory Council members, we appreciate you. And so thank you all for such a great day. And I and I know it's a long virtual day, but Rick and I appreciate you all very much. And we will, you will be receiving an email from GCAP regarding copies of presentations as well as recordings when they are available. Just give us a couple of days for that. Yeah. Am I missing anything, Britt? No. That is everything. I think we're good. So I'm going to try to network. If everybody's still on, I'm going to try to network again. <laughs> See who I can talk to before we leave and before the event closes. So everyone, have a wonderful rest of your Wednesday and a great rest of your week and weekend. Thanks, Britt.